Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Negro Divide, a reply part 1. And our very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. This video is not a propaganda video and never a deliberate attempt to misinform anyone. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Frederick Douglass And from our brother Khalid Abdul Muhammad, when they can't defeat you, they will always find some negro some bootlicking, butt-licking, buck-dancing, bamboozled, half-baked, half-fried, sissified, punkified, pasteurized, homogenized, n-word that they can trot out in front of you. And from Marcos Gavi, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. Negro divides. Did you watch our series on the Yoruba question? Did you find time to read the comments the series attracted? Is it clear to you that the Negroes clearly have no idea of their identity or who they really are? So permit us to ask, what's the history of your identity? Do you know? So do you remember when we mentioned that Yariba, now Yoruba, was coined and created circa 1808? by the slave masters. Did you see comments from the so-called Yorubans? Remember when we told you Yorubas are not Negroes? The correct narrative should actually be that Yoruba as a group comprises of Negroes and non-Negroes because they did not exist as a group during the slave trade. However, today we are just going to be replying to some of the comments we received from our series on the Yoruba question. Now, the challenge is some users who saw that there was no recorded history of Yorubas any time before 1808. Now, instead of looking at what we were saying, they now started saying we claim that Yoruba did not exist before 1808, whereas there was no group like that. What the slave master simply did was to bring the Negroes together with those that were capturing and selling them and named them Yoruba which is a slave master's game, any time, any day, that's just what they do. So let us quickly take a look at who the Negroes are really by referencing a book called British Nigeria, a geographical and historical description of the British positions adjacent to the Niger River, West Africa by Lieutenant Colonel A.F. Mokola Ferryman and it was published 1902 and there it tells us that the most popular method of classifying the natives of this portion of Africa is under three heads, visibly Hamitic, Negroid, and Negro. The Hamites are supposed to have had their origin in southwestern Asia. To have immigrated into Africa at some unknown time and to be represented in the western Sudan by the Barber division of the Libyan group to which, as previously pointed out, possibly belong the Fulas, that's the Fulanese, the Bonos and the Bogos. Now note this very well because all these groups are in Nigeria. So when you see support for Fulanese and Kanuris and Bogos or Bonos or whoever they call, you understand where it's coming from. The so-called African Americans will not understand this. The Negroid is the link between the Hamite and the Negro resulting from intermarriage while the negro is the west african pure and simple whose blood has remained unadulterated by the foreigner this classification is at first sight clear enough but an element of confusion appears when we find negroes described as sons of ham so you see that negroes are not hamites as you may be thinking and mohammedans in general spoken of as arabs this again you see that the northerners, mostly the non-Negroes, were Mohammedans. Practically, we have only to deal with Hamites, Negroes, and a cross between the two. The first 
and last holy Mohammedan, the Negro, in the main pagan, though where he has been conquered, Mohammedan. So our interest is where it says, though where he has been conquered, Mohammedan, because the Negroes are the targets. So all these things you are seeing is all about the Negroes. So we want to talk about the divides, but not in detail. For example, we're not going to talk about the different ways Christianity, Islam, and Judaism has divided them, but the other political and subtle ways that the slave master has used identities and appellations to match them with the Hamitic and Negroid groups who were the main slave hunters during the slave trade. And their interest is to continue to use those Hamitic and Negroid groups because like we told you, the slave master recorded that they are not very intelligent, which we shall ultimately show you in very clear detail where they describe them as such. And for the interest of those who do not understand who the Negroes really are, this is why you hear them saying, oh, Yorubas are Negroes, these people are not, simply because they are ignorant of the fact that those appellations were created by the slave masters. Originally, all the Negroes were known as Negroes. So all these other names you are seeing, these are Igbos, these are Yorubas, these are um, Efik, these are Ibibio, it's a slave masters divide and conquer system. So to understand a little summary of who the Negroes really are, because saying that the Negroes could have been able to capture and sell themselves doesn't make sense because it's like saying somebody is peaceful and at the same time violent. It doesn't make sense. But if it makes sense to you, please put it in the comment section. Because the only reason Negroes were being captured and enslaved was because they were peaceful and their way of life at that time, which the slave master labeled paganism, forbade them from killing people. So that's why you see that you could catch a Negro, make him a slave, and he's not going to kill you. But the, when they captured the so-called Hamitic groups and the Negroid groups who were more violent, they normally killed their masters, which are, these are all documented anyways. You could also reference them yourself. But let us reference observations on the slave trade and a description of some part of the coast of Guinea during a voyage made in 1787 and 1788 in company with Dr. A. Sperman and Captain Arrhenius by C. B. Wadstrom and it was um, published 1789. And there he tells us that I should yet have thought myself justifiable in supposing that the wars among the Negroes originated in the slave trade. Now this is the author writing. For in all the observations I have been able to make, and I went to the coast of Africa not with any commercial views, but for the sole purpose of inquiry and observation. I have ever considered the Negroes as a quiet, inoffensive people, happy in themselves and in one another, enjoying the comforts of life without the intervention of toil and trouble. If therefore I had found wars among a people of such dispositions and so situated as to have no motive for them, I should certainly have set them down as having been excited for some diabolical purpose and for none so likely as for the persecution of the slave trade. So our interest is for you to see someone who went there to find out how a people could have been the same capturing themselves. But he noticed that this is not the case. We chose this particular material because it was far back enough to some extent. So you understand what we are talking about. At this moment, there was nothing like Yoruba or Igbo or anybody like that. All these other appellations were coming from the slave masters in an attempt to divide. So this is why you see that when the so-called Igbos today are being oppressed, be it the Efix, the Bibios, all the slaves from the Bight of Benin and Biafra were recorded as Igbos. Then the Negroes that are now conquered and within what you will call the Yariba group will be defending because they no longer understand that they are not even the same with the people they are living with. Remember, what the slave master did in the creation of things like the Yareba group was simply to bring together the Negroes and the Fulanese and Arabs and other Hamites and Negroids who were capturing the Negroes for them during the slave trade. And this was done after 1808 when they were trying to stop the slave trade. Bear this important point in mind. So, and now, to the comments we got from some of our previous series 
this user says, George Washington is no man to quote since he enslaved black people, Negroes or whatever you want to call us. Also, he grew up in Virginia, which is now admitting that most of its slaves were Igbo. If anything, he was a hypocrite. Now remember, if we assume but without conceding that whoever made this comment is actually a Negro or somehow has Negro blood, you will see how hypocritical the Negroes really are. He is condemning the Judge Washington that even at least had some time to say something against the slave trade. Meanwhile, he is defending the Nigerian army that was the same army that was used to capture the slaves. So you see that condemnations seem to come only when the white people are involved. But when the atrocity is committed by the Hamites or any dark-skinned people, they are accommodated. So you see what is happening in a place like Sub-Saharan Africa today, in Ambazonia and in Biafra. As those people are slaughtering in their numbers, they what would have been Negroes during the slave trade. They have the defense of the so-called Negroes or the so-called African Americans who also will be condemning the white people but they forget that it is those same people there that provide the weapons with which these other people kill others so you see how this game works now we got a comment of someone who also said something so please compare that user's comment with this other user that said you never talk about the caucasian and why he is so evil i would like to know what you think now our response to that was simple without the enemy within the enemy outside cannot hurt you and which is an african proverb now remember they keep talking about the caucasian or the white man and forget the enemy within who is actually the main culprit in the whole thing somebody captured the negroes now the reason you might notice why they are talking about the caucasian and not the actual captors and negro hunters is because they think it was the people that actually sold themselves. They think the Negro is like a cattle, like the slave master conditioned his foot soldiers to believe. So they deliberately avoid the atrocities of the Hamitic groups and Negroid groups in what was Negro land and Guinea, deliberately or somehow believing that it's the same people dealing with themselves. So now you notice, if you were to shoot one or two people in Europe or America, the flags will be at half mast but in sub-saharan africa in what was negro land and guinea in biafra and in ambazonia they will kill hundreds thousands nobody will talk their slave masters media will not report them and their foot soldiers will just be talking as if they are siblings with those they are murdering because they lack humanity they lack common sense which we have challenged you here to investigate yourself however moving forward you see the comment from one of the users as well the Emancipation Proclamation, if you actually took time to read it, says nothing about importing slaves, only that the slaves in the Confederate States were free. It was in 1807, British Parliament outlawed slave selling to the Caribbean and 1808, the United States followed outlawed it to this country. Still, the last of America's slave ship was in 1860, before Lincoln became president. Now, if you notice, he is still trying to apportion blames to purely the white and exonerating the black. The Emancipation Proclamation actually stopped the export to the point that what was the army used for the slave raiding at that time was renamed. That's how you got what you call your Nigerian army, your Ghanaian army and all those armies you have in West Africa today, which we are going to look at in this video. And the same user made the following comment as well. And he said, the Renaissance also, when I checked the Nigerian army while rooted at 1863 was not some large force, nor was it set up to raid for slaves. It was set up by a man named Glover and it consisted of a small number of houses. Now maybe Fulani enlisted, but there are at, or at least have been Igbo in said army since whenever. So at least you can see that he is trying to exonerate the army. Or at least make everyone responsible for the problem and that's where the slave master is very sort of you see the slave master created those identities from the Negro group so the moment he created the identities people start pointing fingers at each other but with the enemy within being used by the slave master 
to destroy them from within themselves. So remember we told you that the Negro does not believe what he hears, does not believe what he sees, does not believe what he reads, but he believes what he is told. However, the slave master understands how to make the story believable to the Negro. However he does it, we don't know. You notice that this user claims or alleges or believes that the so-called army was created as a small group in 1863 without asking or telling us who was capturing the slaves before 1863 that made him believe that the army could have been formed in 1863. So let us look at who he claimed formed the army. Remember he claimed that he was formed by Glover in 1863 and it consisted of a small number of houses. So please bear this in mind to show you how gullible some so-called Negroes or Hermetic groups or whoever, how gullible they are. To the lies or whims and caprices of the slave masters. So let us reference Life of Sir John Holly Glover by Lady Glover and it was published 1897 and there we are told that while Captain Glover was still on leave in England, new complications arose in Africa which led to war with Ashanti and it will be seen in the next chapter how he was sent for by the war office to advise the authorities with regard to raising native troops and utilizing the rivers and roads into the interior through which they must pass. Now this is as at 1873 and he is telling us that somebody who was being called to come and help them raise native forces raised the same native forces by 1863. So notice this very well, this is almost 10 years after. But our interest is for him to pick up this book and read it himself. However, on the opposite page, he tells us that before proceeding to give the unfinished report of the native expedition against the Ashantis drawn up by, by Sir John Glover, it may be as well to indicate briefly the causes which led to the outbreak of hostilities on the west coast. There can be no question that the main exciting cause of the Ashanti War of 1872 to 1873 was the decision by the Dutch to the British Crown of Elmina and their other settlements on the Gold Coast in April 1872. In spite of the fact that prior to the ratification of the convention by which the Dutch surrendered their rights, the British government had ascertained from the King of Ashanti by whatever means, that's not our interest. Our interest is to show you that Glover did not form the army. The problem this user has is he reads what the slave master and their foot soldiers are saying and runs with them now again in all in an attempt to protect the people that did the slave hunting which they are still doing till tomorrow morning which we are going to continue to show you so if you look on top just above the highlighted portion you see where they got that lie from because remember they look at what the facts really are and twist them a bit you see where it says captain glover proceeds to cape coast to enlist houses and native allies so at this time this was not for the so-called nigerian army this was for their expedition against ashanti that's what they were doing because the british troops were already on ground they needed local troops to help them fight the ashantis like we told you it's always very easy to get a negro to use against his fellows so that's why you see that they were able to get locals to help them fight the Ashantis. Meanwhile, the Ashantis are not Negroes anyway. So please notice that this user claims that the Nigerian army allegedly formed in 1863 was not formed for slave raids but forgot that the slave trade had lasted from 1434 to 1863 and does not ask which army they used to capture the slaves before the 1863 and that by 1863 they simply rebranded the slave hunting terror group all in a bit to stop the slave raids. Now remember when the so-called Nigerian army celebrated 150 years in 2013 and people asked them how come you are older than the country by almost 100 and something years. What did they do? Instead of replying or giving the answer or the background, they quickly went and removed this Glover he is quoting now from their website. Go to their website and see if you, if you will find the same thing there. But he used to be there. So that's to tell you who they are. The moment you catch their lie, they try looking for a way, an exit strategy. They look for a way to escape from it. They are liars. 
but this user doesn't know that that's why we challenge you leave the so-called white people leave all the things they were they tell you try to find out who did the capturing how did they get the negroes to go into a slave ship if you notice these people like the Dan Calloway group telling you about being indigenous, those are all slave masters games. We will show you that the slave master never paid the slaves anywhere. Their formula is to pay the slave owners. They never pay the slaves. So all these other indigenous aborigine or niji crap will not work. That may just be their game against the ADOS movement that they think might be asking for reparations. Remember. If they are able to now use the likes of the Nkalaway, like Professor Gates too, to propagate that these people are indigenous, the DOS movement will lose steam. But in any case, always remember that the slave master uses a Negro against his brother. That's his only formula. So for anything he wants to do, he will always do it through a Negro against it because those are the only people that are easier because of being bread-headed. Those are the only people that you can get to use against themselves. That's why you can send someone from the Nigerian army to go and raid a place in the south where his siblings are and he will do so. Because one, he doesn't know the history of the army he joined. Two, with economic strangulation, they are able to make people to join the army when ordinarily they wouldn't have. Now you notice that this author said Igbos would have joined. He forgot that there was nothing like Igbos originally. Negroes were just Negroes, flat. They were formerly Grometas. They were formerly Guineans. All these names and appellations were the slave masters divide and conquer strategy which all you need to understand it is to look at the history of those appellations and when they were coined and what they were coined for. But let's just move forward. Notice also that this same user who observed that Nigeria is not older than the army because he saw Nigeria in a book of 1799 did not also remember that the troops raided for slaves before 1799. So you see, all he is doing is trying to defend the army because he just wants it to be true that it wasn't the army that captured and sold them. Now, ask yourself this simple question. Somebody is supposedly a so-called African-American. Now, he never asks who could have captured my forefathers. He believes what the slave master told him and never takes time to say, let me even find out who captured who and how. Because there is no way, if you check it very well, there is no way you can just be taken to a slave ship. You have to be captured in one way or the other. Now, for those that were sold, when you talk about subsistence and wholesale, you will discover that there were just few, one or two here and there. Those were people that had one issue or the other. Let's say they condemned them to death for something and chose to exactly what Joseph's brothers did after they cast him into the pit. They said, oh, instead of killing him, why don't we sell him? That's exactly how they got some of those tricks they put in there. They just said, oh, okay, instead of these people that have committed a sin against our creator, because they lived that in accordance with the laws of the Most High at that time, let's just sell them to the white man. That's just what they thought of. Meanwhile, the slave master had other ideas. He now decided to use his... Um, slave hunters, the hermetic and negroid goods to be doing the raiding for them. So he will earn them and provide them with what they need to capture these people. Now remember there was no news media. There was no radio, no TV. So there was no way to explain to the people that these slave hunters were coming from elsewhere. All they would not see was one neighboring village had been raided and captured and everyone gone. Those left behind will, be, will commit suicide. And that's it. So they have no information. All they were doing was looking for how do we run away from this problem. Some of them built walls. If you read the accounts, you will understand what we're saying better than we can even explain it. So now, because they didn't know that these people were coming, if you check it, you will see that the raids were done early in the morning. They raided into the morning. They surround them in the morning and then set the houses on fire. So as people run out, they capture those they, they can sell, the young ones, and then kill the old ones that they can sell. It's not like they would take only those they could sell. Apparently, they didn't want the news to go around to tell the people that, Luko, it's these people that are coming. We will also show you, if we have enough time on this video, when the people discovered that it was the Fulanese that were coming to do it and the Arabs, because they were fairer. Don't mind the dark Fulanese today. They only acquired the violent path. 
they didn't acquire any other part now when they see those fair fulanese they will raise an alarm people will run away so th that's why they come early in the morning just before morning when it's still dark surround the place and set the houses on fire this is things you have to find out it takes an army to do that it takes an army to do that that's just what we want to tell you but you notice that this user is either he's a fulani an arab or a mixture or some form of a hermetic negroid that's why he wants to defend them so we want to show you the facts so you look at it yourself don't mind any so-called african-american because they were thought the same way we were thought back home in sub-saharan africa that it was the negroes that sold themselves if you ask an average nigerian today why is the nigerian army older than nigeria he has no idea so here is the wikipedia page from where he got his uh, fake narrative of glover forming the nigerian army from so he claims that glover formed the nucleus of present-day nigeria's army and police with 10 house runaway slaves on 1st june 1863 meanwhile the house are an negroid they are not negroes so they were not being captured so there's no way they could have been runaway slaves the group was known as Glover Housers or Glover's 40 Thieves. So you see from 10 Housers to 40 Thieves, Glover went to great lengths to develop bonds of personal loyalty with the armed Housers. He personally trained, commanded and chose his successors, ensuring their loyalty. In return for their loyalty, Glover rewarded his troops with land and dwellings. He raised their pay and provided them with smart uniforms that broadcast their status of free men and agents of the British colonial government. Now, permit us to ask you, if he was in Lagos and went all the way to Hausa land to get 10 Hausas to form an army, what happened to the Yorubas? Let's assume, but without considering that Yorubas existed at that time, they were called Yareba. What happened to them? So he couldn't find 10 people from Yoruba, it's only from Hausa. Remember, we have always told you that the slave master documented it for them, that the Hausas are only good as police and uh, army. And that's what they are used for. So the slave masters use their foot soldiers for the same purpose till today. But let's just leave the question of his choice, assuming but without considering that that's what happened. Remember, this is a naval officer. So the British already had their standing army. Remember the West African Frontier Force that was used to fight against the slave trade. So why is he forming this one? If he claims that's the Nigerian army, what happened to the West African Frontier Force? These are questions we are asking that our user to tell us first, before we take him down to how the army came to be. So we'll be expecting our dear viewer, Professor Watt, to explain to us whether the West African Frontier Force was fighting the Nigerian army or who were they fighting to stop the slave raid? Because that's what the West African Frontier Force was supposed to do. So let's just move forward and leave him with this level of, you know, trying to defend an army that were behind the slave hunts and slave trade. They are still behind it till today, which we shall ultimately show you, which even their body language shows in Nigeria and in Bazonia, because it's the same people, the same group, the same area. All the slave master did, if you look at Cameroon, if you look at Nigeria, you look at Togo, Benin. All those countries, what they indicate is the European country that owns what? Benin belongs to the French. Nigeria belongs to the British. Cameroon belongs to the British and French. It used to be a, a German colony, as they would call it. So all of them respect that till tomorrow morning. You can't go and do certain things in Nigeria without the approval of the slave masters. Likewise in Cameroon. That's why when you see them fighting against or fighting for something like one Cameroon, one Nigeria, it's not because they are all stupid and doing it themselves. The slave master is hiding behind his foot soldiers and urging them on, providing them with weapons and doing the propaganda. Let your research question here be, who was killing who and why? And how are they getting the weapons? Because they don't manufacture anything called weapons. We shall ultimately show you how that favors the slave master what their game is all about is a very simple thing to decipher if you understand that terrain and on a side note there is something they may call up at any moment these foot soldiers remember their whole goal is to claim that negroes actually captured and sold themselves which is a lie the slave master sold to everybody so our our interest is to prevent them from selling that lie again remember 
these are the reasons we, we are struggling with them over how Yareba came to be. The slave master created a group, added their foot soldiers into it, and named, labeled them Yareba or Yoruba. But now these people are buying it as an ancient group that existed without knowing that it is a Negroes plus the foot soldiers of the slave master, those who did the slave hunting and slave capturing for them that they used to create it. That's why you can't see Yareba or Yoruba anywhere before 1808. You can't see it anywhere. If you doubt us, ask any Yoruba professor. Most of them know. But like we told you, you can always use a Negro against his fellow Negroes. That's normal. That's a known fact about them. It's common knowledge. So now, this is the Aro Anglo War. If you ask them now, they will say, oh, the Aro fought the British, which is a very big lie from the pit of hell. There is no way a people without arms could have fought any war. So now, according to them, it says it's between 1901 and 1902. So 1901 and 1902 was a British and Nigerian army combined raid on the priests, which was when they wanted to deceive the whole world that it was the priests that were selling the slaves. When they made up their minds to stop it, they obviously entered some negotiations with the Fulanese, who owned what you call your Nigerian army today, which we challenge you to research. You don't need to believe us. We are not asking you to believe us. Because if you research it, you will understand it better than if you believed what we are saying. So, now, this Aro Anglo was, you notice that he claims that the, he listed the colonels in the army that did it, and he said 87 officers and 1,550 soldiers was the strength of the British and 7,500 plus Arrow and Allied soldiers. This is a very big lie. At that time, there was nothing like Arrow having an army. It's impossible because there were, one, there is no barracks. Two, how were they living? Three, how were they paid? What were they paid with? So you see how the slave master came to say they didn't have horses, they didn't have camels. They were just priests doing their thing with what, whatever they were worshipping at that time, which we are going to show you shortly. But then, the, the whole cross of this matter is these viewers insist that, oh no, it was the Negroes capturing and selling themselves. And then they claim it was these Arab people that did it. Now notice where he claims that the Arabs knew that the British penetration would destroy their economic dominance of the hinterland. This is a lie. The Arab priests were like the rulers of the place. They were more like it was a theocracy. These were priests. That's how the place was. Till tomorrow, everybody knows that the so-called Igbos had no kings. These are well documented as well. So now, he goes further to say, they also opposed their religion, Christianity, which is correct because the religion to them was false. And he goes further to say, which threatened their religious influence through their oracle Ibnubab. Now, remember we have shown you that this same thing they are calling Ibnubab. When they first came, they said it was Chuku, Chuku Abiyama. And according to them, they said it meant, and people say, God lives there. Then, they changed it to Long Juju. It was when questions started coming because some people were saying, how could an Igbo, supposed Igbo deity, have an English name? Because if you check, Long Juju makes no sense, whether in Igbo, Efiki, Bibio, or any other indigenous language. It was a label the slave master gave it. Like we told you, the Negro listens to what he is told. He doesn't believe what he knows. So the slave master figured that if he doesn't change it to something more indigenous, it won't make sense. He now went and started calling it Oracle Ibn Obab. That's how. So it goes further to say, the arrow laid raids and invasions on communities were conducted in order to undermine British penetration since the 1890s. N notice that the slave trade had lasted from 1430s to 1890s. That's when they started accusing the arrow. Of course, the Arrow had every right to defend their territory against people coming with a fake religion. That's the truth about it. But then, let's go further. It says, while the British prepared for the invasion of Arochuku in November 1901, the Arrow launched their last major offensive before the Arrow expedition by British forces. Arrow forces led by Okoro Toti sacked Obegu, a British ally, which resulted in 400 people dying. The attack quickened British preparation for their offensive. This is a very big lie from the pit of hell, which we shall ultimately show you. 
but just so we don't digress so much the arrow did not have any foot soldiers any troops they just had little enforcers like what you will call what the slave master will call slaves but you will call it the apprentice you will call it the so-called osus they were the nazarenes they followed the priests that's how it was all the same let us leave that for now and referenced the making of northern nigeria by captain cwj or and it was published 1911 and there we are told that in the spring of 1901 sir frederick lugard proceeded home on leave of absence mr william wallace assuming administrative charge of the protectorate until his return in the autumn the same year a second contingent of troops between 600 and 700 strong was sent from the protectorate to the ashanti war note this very well look at the dates too leaving in april and returning in october in the later month that is november a contingent 300 strong was further sent to southern nigeria to assist in an expedition against the arrow tribes in that protectorate this being the third occasion within two years on which northern nigeria was called upon to provide a contingent for operations outside the protectorate so this was when they destroyed the arrow place there was no war they just raided and destroyed and burnt the whole place down because they believed that that's where the people's power was now look at the total number of troops and uh, compare it with the number of priests how many priests did they have were they up to 10 or 20 that they would now have uh, 300 people capturing slaves for them not living in any house or were their houses these are things they needed to at that time to claim that oh they were behind the slave trade now if you get this material and read it you will see that there is no way any sensible person can say that the arab priests were the slave hunters now if you notice they didn't even say they were the slave raiders or slave hunters anywhere they just said they raided and destroyed them this other narrative of oh they were carrying expedition 400 people died those things are lies which are very easy if you conduct the most basic of primary school research you will find out what we're saying and here from the same author it tells us that slave raiding with all its attendant horrors was being carried on by the northern mohammedans upon the southern pagans and the latter divided into a vast small number of small tribes were constantly engaged in inter-tribal warfare now this is the slave masters game they keep claiming that those people were engaged in inter-tribal warfare but with common sense you will know that there is no way somebody with bows and arrows can capture another person for sale secondly even without bows and arrows if you used gun if you shot the person you will discover that he becomes immobile he dies so you can catch slaves with guns as well too so the only way you can catch them is of course with the troops where they raid hunt and capture them and yoke them because remember it's recorded that if the negroes are caught they if, and they are not restrained they commit suicide so how can somebody now say it's the same people capturing themselves if this makes sense to you put it in the comment section and explain to us how we are ready for any debate however you want it how negroes could have just captured themselves with bows and arrows or even with guns just explain to us how you think that's possible so here again you see that in december however the return of the troops from ashanti relieved the situation and enabled the high commissioner at last to deal with the two mohammedan emirs who had been devastating the country an expedition was at once organized and early in january it marched on Kotagora. now our interest is to show you that anyone they are not telling you about that's what they're hiding if you notice they never mention even the fact that the army was behind all this so the person claiming that oh the army wasn't formed by this let him tell us which armies we are going for all these things that they are calling troops if they are not army who are they who are they fighting against he needs to understand what they did so here again you see the abolition of slave raiding it says raiding and inter-tribal warfare was therefore the first duty that devolved on the new administration but this means nothing more nor less than a military occupation of the entire country so it goes further to say for it was idle to suppose that peace 
could be achieved from a distance by a mere decree without a force on the spot strong enough to impose it. Now you are claiming that the slaves were acquired peacefully by people who were not armed, but they now need force to impose it. Then he goes further to say, nothing but fierce opposition to a policy which prohibited slave raiding could be expected from the Mohammedan states whose entire social organization depended on a sufficient supply of slaves and whose so-called wars provided them with their main source of income. Can a cat give up mousing was the reply of the slave raiding emir of Contagora when informed that under the British regime slave raiding must cease. When I die it will be with a slave in my mouth. The pagan tribes might be expected to welcome power which promised them their immunity from the slave raids which had devastated their countries for centuries but they formed only a portion of the area to be administered. Now we ask you, with all these things you still are blaming the so-called pagans because the Arab priests were supposedly pagans by the slave master's definition of negro paganism. And now you are blaming the same pagans of being behind the slave trade. If you think that thing is true and makes sense to you, please put it in the comment section. Let's see how and where you are getting such a conclusion from. Let us also reference A Tropical Dependency by Flora Elshaw, Lady Lugard, and it was published in 1905. Now remember, this was the same woman they accused of being behind the name Nigeria. Meanwhile, the name existed before she was born. Now we challenge you to understudy what the slave master is doing. He knows how to reiteratively lie. So when he knows that this system is old enough to be decoded, he changes to a new system. When they changed the format of the slave trade around 1914, they claimed there was some form of amalgamation that brought the North and South together, which is a lie, and that this woman now coined the name Nigeria from the river Niger, whereas books published as far back as 1790s contained the name Nigeria in them. And it's a big lie. But let's just see what she says about the slave trade. That will tell us whether or not these people were culpable. So here he tells us that the position of the Fulani chiefs was, however, in the first instance, profoundly modified by a condition which was of the very essence of British administration. A large part of their revenue had consisted of tribute paid in slaves and in some cases of the tithe levied on the produce of slave raids which they conducted either in person or by the medium of the commander of their troops. Can you tell me what can be true other than an army? Now you are telling us that there was an army, Nigerian army, allegedly formed in 1863 by Glover, a naval officer in Lagos, and but he went to take houses. So where were these troops at that time? Why did Luga them need to form West African Frontier Force to battle the army against slave raids? These are things you have to answer us if you think it wasn't that same army that you're seeing today. Let us also reference the Journal of Negro History, Carter G. Woodson, Volume 2, and it was published 1917. And there it tells us that the chief, not having a sufficient supply of slaves on hand to trade, caused his big drums to be beaten and organized two bands of troops to execute a raid among the heathen tribes to the east and southwest. The raiding bands attacked only tribes with whom they were at war or who refused to adopt the Mohammedan religion. So our question to you, our dear viewer who claims that the Nigerian army was not this same slave hunting terror group, is to tell us where the army was at that time. And if these troops are not armies, this is as at 1917, the Journal of Negro History. Because at that time, they were still saying the truth. It was when they figured that they could just lie because the Negro doesn't read. He just believes what he is told. They now started saying, oh, you sold yourselves. If you were to go to a place like Nigeria, they would say the Negroes actually sold themselves. That's what you will hear. And of course, this is also propagated by the so-called conquered Negroes. They will also be saying the same thing. Now, if you notice, the so-called African Americans also say, oh, they sold our people. Without asking themselves how one man could sell another man, is the man cattle that you will just wake up and start following another man and say, oh, I've sold you and he starts going. That narrative doesn't even make sense. But then, 
we see what is happening here so the guy you are telling us that the nigerian army was founded in 1963 and it was just a small troop now tell us if they are using troops to go and capture here tell us which troops they used before they found nigerian army in 1863 and what the army was supposed to be doing was it supposed to stop the slave trade was it supposed to stop the slave hunts when they were already going on expeditions fighting those that were raiding the slaves before then we challenge you to provide us with those answers please thank you and you can read further down to see the prices of the slaves as they were sold so now when they tell you they were sold you would think it was just that they bring somebody and sell you won't know that the army goes to capture them it's exactly like oil today if you threaten oil the way the fulani and the nigerian army will handle you today was exactly how it was if you threatened the slave trade at that time if you doubt us conduct a research put it in the comment section that yes this is where you people lied the slave master knows this and it's incumbent on you to investigate what we just told you that was the main economic mainstay of the place at that time the negroes were not considered human so they considered the, what was that part of negro land as slave farm now we challenge you to find out how those people you call riverine those people that live on top of water how they got there at least you somehow believe that there was some adam and eve that gave birth to everyone tell us how those people got there they were people escaping from the slave hunts of the arabs the europeans and of course the fulanese if you doubt us conduct your research and from the same journal it tells us that after the proper ceremonies of farewell at the palace of the sultan the camels were loaded and the children placed upon the baggage the Negro men chained together were placed in the middle of each caravan and the women were grouped eight or ten together and guarded by a man with a whip. The signal was given and the great combined caravans consisting in all of about 6,000 slaves and 7,500 camels started on their homeward march. And you are telling us that no, it was the same Negroes that sold themselves. And still on the left it says, the raiding troops after having been on the campaign for nearly a month returned with 2,000 captives who marched in front of the column the men women old and young almost all nude or half clad in ragged blue cloth and the children piled upon the camels the women were groaning and the children crying while the men though seemingly more resigned bore bloody marks upon their backs made by the whips now you're telling us that it's the same men that they captured here that actually did the capturing if they were the same, how did they know who to capture? It's the same way you have your army today. If the army goes to kill, he knows who to target. You see, the same way the army said he was going to do python dance and started killing innocent women and children. Because that's what the Nigerian army is. Till tomorrow morning, the same with the Cameroonian army. Those armies are the slave hunting terror groups. They were just remodeled, replanted and given uniforms. If you doubt us, conduct your research. Like this user has said, oh no, the army was formed in 1863. Because that's the lie the slave master told him and he believes. Without asking basic questions. Now, if you go to Nigeria and mention that the army was even formed in 1863, many people will not believe him because they don't even know about it. They would think, oh no, it was formed in 1960. Just to tell you how biased some people are and how much they love the chain. Look at the same army on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia claims that the same army was founded in 1960. Now remember, this viewer claims that it was established in 1863 when few houses were brought together and all that. Now Wikipedia is telling us that the same army was founded in 1960. Now we ask you, someone who reads from wikipedia will believe that it was founded in 1960 and this user somehow believes that it was established in 1863 and the only reason he probably believes it is because he thinks the slaves were actually sold and not hunted and captured like rabbits let us also reference a narrative of travels in northern africa in the years 1818 1819 and 1820 and it was written by captain gf leon and published 1821 and there it shows us that Belo, son, as I have said, of the celebrated Felata chief, is famed for many very noble actions and is a man generally beloved. He is a great warrior 
and the people about him are very well armed and appointed. He does not, like the other chiefs, seek out the gaudy dresses and toys brought by the Kafirs, but buys up arms of all descriptions. This fool and it tomorrow buys arms. They can starve the whole country just to buy weapons. Lugard put it this way. He loves weapons as Orientals love jewelry. So you understand that this is something inherent. Then he goes further to say, reverence for his religion and for those who are eminent in it are amongst his virtues. I was acquainted with a man who passed himself off as a sheriff, which he was not, and who had been plundered by the Tuareg. Belo actually presented to this impostor 100 negresses, thinking he only offered a slight testimony of respect to the memory of the prophet in the person of his pretended descendant. So we challenge you, our dear viewer, to now show us where the people you claim were also part of the slave hunters and slave raiders. Give somebody at least one slave. Let's look at it from there. Because if the slave master bought the slave, he knows who he bought them from and will be fighting to protect them because he is still using them. These are people that lack humanity, they lack common sense. So if they were to read this now, for example, you that is asking this question, your duty should have been to verify that what we're saying is right or wrong. But because of that divide, because of the thinking that there is a difference between the Negro, whether the slave master chooses to call him Igbo or Efik or Ibibio or whatever name called, you think they are different. That's a lie. The problem is your brains are not going far behind enough. If you were to take your minds back in time, you will see that those appellations did not exist. So now tell us, is a, somebody who was sold and became a so-called African-American and his uh, brother or sister was sold to Jamaica and another sibling was sold to Cuba. Are you now telling us that, oh, okay, this one is Cuban, this one is African-American, and this one is Jamaican. Therefore, they are now different. That's not the thing. You need to read between the lines. The slave master is hiding something in what was Negro land and Guinea. And if you were to open your eyes and study very well, read between the lines, you will see that they are still on their game till tomorrow morning. Let us reference the Fullers of Central Africa and the African slave trade by W.B. Hodgson. And it was published 1843 and there we see the following throughout the whole extent of Negritia or negro land the fullers undoubtedly occupy preeminence they are found spread over a vast geographic region of 28 to 30 degrees in longitude 1500 miles and of 7 to 10 in latitude or 500 miles they extend from the atlantic ocean from the mouth of the Senegal and Senegambia on the west to the kingdoms of Bono and Mandra on the east, from the desert of Sahara on the north to the mountains of Guinea or Kong on the south. This wide superficie contains more than 700,000 square miles, which is equal to the fourth part of Europe and the tenth part of the immense continent of Africa. Compared with the United States, these parallels of longitude would extend from Maine to Missouri. What may be the fuller population spread over this region, it is impossible to approximate. But a low estimate of three inhabitants to the square mile would give a population of two millions. So the Fulanese are spread all over. That's why even when you are saying these are people are killing us, you will see somebody from within you shouting, oh no, it's a lie. It's not because it's a lie. They are planted everywhere. They act as enemies within they own the army as well so the army is totally as useless to the negro as anything else if you doubt us conduct your research and going further down it gives the different names they are known by which is felan felani fulani fula felata fetia and the peola whatever but our interest is for you to know who they are and note what we are talking about the nigerian army the cameroonian army all those armies used to be their army along with the arabs during the slave trade they were used for slave hunting and slave raiding which we challenge you to investigate conduct your research put it in the comment section that we have lied or that you found out that they are not like this user has done at least we can see that there is no way anybody can say the army was formed in 1863 
instead of just that they renamed the slave hunting terror groups in 1863 to Nigerian army. And here it tells us that on the Niger and in Sudan, they occupy or have conquered the kingdoms of Yareba, Nufi, Hausa and others. Now remember this Sudan you see here used to be the name of Negroland or what you call Northern Nigeria today. However, they moved to the people over. We can't explain in this video, but we had seen the trend, which we shall look at in a different video. So it goes further to say, there is an immense country yet unexplored by the white man, 800 miles in extent between Bambara on the west and Yareba on the east, and lying in the rear of the Green and Ivory Coast. This unknown land is supposed to be occupied by Fulas. Such is the geographical distinction of this singular race. The Fulas are not Negroes. They differ essentially from the Negro race in all the characteristics which are marked by physical anthropology. They may be said to occupy the intermediate space betwixt the Arab and the Negro. All travelers concur in representing them as a distinct race in moral as in physical traits. To their color, the various stamps of bronze, copper, red, reddish and sometimes white has been applied that's our interest here anyways and going further here it tells us that the fullers are a warlike race of shepherds and within this century they have established a political organization subjugated a large portion of sudan and founded sakatu the capital of their empire clapperton says that this town which was built in 1805 by Danfodio, the prophet and the first political and military chief of the Fulas was the most populous which he had seen in Central Africa. So our challenge to you, our dear viewer, that claims that the Nigerian army was not the same slave hunting terror group of the Sultan. We challenge you to tell us which military chief they are talking about here. Can there be a chief without a military? If there was a military, this is as at 1843, where is that military today? You claim that the Nigerian army was formed because they told you. That's the challenge of the Negro. He believes what he is told. But our challenge to you is find out where this military disappeared to. We are not going to conduct that research for you because when you do it, you are going to discover that what happened was at the end of the slave trade because they were cajoled into it. They didn't want to stop it and they've never stopped it. They were cajoled into it. They argued that that was their economic mainstay. So if you are thinking, oh, it was bad. To them, it is not bad. That's why you see, see the army till tomorrow. It kills innocent men, women and children from mostly the southern part that are not Fulanese. We challenge you to investigate this. So now, that military was perhaps a compensation for them. We had shown you that they, they argued that their levies and all that were based on slaves. So their compensation was not to have sent away their military whose only jobs were to capture and sell slaves at that time so that's why you still see that army till tomorrow there is no other thing that army does other than to keep the slave trade in place in a way that you may not understand unless you study it yourself but going further it says about their sultan at the period of his visit the Sultan was Belo, or according to Mr. D. Avizax, correct orthography, Mohammed B. Ella. He also writes Danfodio, Otsman Zon El Nafadia, or Otsman the Destroyer. The, the Destroyer is a, a peaceful man you want us to believe, right? No Negro had that type of attribute. You can investigate it yourself. Then he goes further to say, the Fullers are rigid Mohammedans and according to Molien, the French traveler's report, they are animated by a strong zeal for proselytism. They are the missionaries of Islam among the pagan Negro tribes, note this very well, where they have conquered, they have forced the adoption of the Quran by the sword and whilst pursuing quietly their pastoral occupation, they become schoolmasters, marines and thus propagate the doctrines and precepts of Islam. Wherever the fuller has wandered, the pagan idolatry of the Negro has been overthrown, the barbarous fetish and Grigri has been abandoned, anthropophagy and cannibalism have been suppressed, and the horrible sacrifice of human beings to propitiate the monstrous gods of the Negro barbarian has been supplanted by the worship of the true God. So you see here where the Muslims and Christians meet. You see that 
why they support the Fulani according to them, whatever the true God means to them, they make sure that the Negro does not have his own way of life. But they still turn around to tell you freedom of worship. So our challenge to you, our dear viewer, is if you can tell us how the Fulas did this conquest. We don't want to go into all the details about the army. We want you to do it yourself so that you won't come here to tell us, oh, they were formed in 1863 and the uh, Igbos have joined. Your interest is the fact that you want to get the Igbos into the equation. But you forget that all we are telling you is that it's impossible for the Negroes to have been able to raid and capture themselves to a commercial level the way you are seeing it. That's why it's difficult for you to get it around your head. It's impossible. There is no way. Because if you raid a community, that community ceases to exist. No doubt about it. Now you are telling us that no, they could have raided themselves and still remain. If you know how many communities they destroy to get 400 slaves, you won't be making these comments here. You will go back to your studies. And here he tells us something very interesting and he says, the slave vendor told us that all of the slaves would have to be sent to Raba, the principal slave market, at present in the interior of Africa. He replied that he could make no objection to all I had said, but still that the slave trade was not against the laws of this country and of their king, that if the king of Raba, Sumo Sariki, would make a law against the slave trade, the people in general would willingly give it up. To gain over the Felatas to the abolition party is certainly the most desirable thing as there the axe would be laid to the root of the slave trade. So what more do you need to know who is behind it? Now if you want to understand how they are doing it today, look at the Ruga issue in what is Nigeria today where the slave master is planning to put the Fulanese everywhere around what is called nigeria today in every place that is not their own if you look at the propaganda of the bbc and how they are doing it you will see that this same game is what they are playing it's unfortunate that people do not see it's unfortunate that people still see the people there as the same people which is impossible they only make the negro look stupid to the rest of the world when they are actually not negroes just because they have the same color does not make them the same and until the negroes realize that these people are not the same with them it's not gonna work unfortunately the conquered negroes in the yareba area are also being used so you see all, all of them pretending to be part of the ruga thing because the fulanis are everywhere the only way the enemies outside can hurt you is when there is an enemy within they act as an enemy within the army is part of this the whole thing which we challenge you to investigate now if you doubt what we're saying let's say when the army went to raid or kill the leader of the indigenous people of biafra even though they failed somebody gave the order have you bothered to ask yourself who gave that order how come there is no inquiry to say why did you people go when there is a court that's because they know what they are doing the court is still part of it because the whole essence of a court is for the slave master to determine who is guilty Think about it. If you killed somebody, it's as simple as that. But the slave master used the European court system to make sure that when the Negro does something, he claims it's against the law. If you notice here, this is a slave vendor being asked to stop the business. And he was telling them that it is not against their law. If you doubt what we're saying, look at the Fulanese in places like Nigeria today. If you ask for freedom, they will tell you that it is against their constitution for anybody to leave the union. Now, you will think it's a constitution that everybody gathered to make, but it's a constitution they drafted with the slave master, not with the people. If you doubt us, investigate. The Nigerian constitution was drafted by one man with the slave master hiding behind him to draft it. So when you talk about freedom, they will tell you that, oh no, our constitution forbids it. So the people who do not know will think that there is a constitution people agreed on, whereas the constitution was the slave master's product. Nobody from the victimized areas had any input in them. They go there and write what they want. And that's why you see the army will always come and kill innocent people and nothing happens. Then the slave master will say, oh no, they are obeying their laws. Look at it here so you understand what we are talking about. So to show you how those people you call governors, you probably heard about how some people beat up a so-called 
lawmaker in Nigeria that is lawless recently to show you how those things work and how it worked back then. So if you read further down, you see where it says, speaking of the Nufi country, which is governed by two chiefs, Ezuesa and Magia, Male Magia, he says, when I asked the people whether Mamagia sold many slaves, they all burst out laughing and said, how can he sell slaves to being a slave himself to the Felatas? That's the Fulanese. Now you are telling us that those people like the governors, you will come and the Fulani will massacre an entire village and they keep quiet. You think they kept quiet because they are all foolish. They are conquered Negroes. They become more Catholic than the Pope. That's why you see the likes of Ekolemado that has been in the Senate for like almost 12 years. They kill his people and he pretends not to see. Then we'll be bold enough to show you a picture of, of his children schooling abroad. It's the same thing. The Negro has no sympathy for his brothers. That's the same problem there. The Fulani understands this. The slave master knows it as well. If you doubt what we're saying, all you need to do is look at these materials, look for them, study them yourself, and look at what is happening there today. The same thing happens in where you call Cameroon or uh, Ambazonia. If you doubt what we're saying, investigate that too. The same group uh, control the whole area. The same Fulanese rule more than four or five African countries. You need to find out how they did it. Because the slave master hides behind them with his propaganda and all that. So you understand what's going on. In subsequent editions, if we have all the time, we're just struggling with our laptop device on the moment. We will show you how the other people are slaves to the system and to the establishment. We will show you the flow, the economic flow. You understand why they go to war to keep the Nigeria or whatever they call it one. If you also doubt that the slave master has a hand in it, go and listen to Obama's message to Nigerians before 2015 election because before then, a Negro was in power and he got there by accident, which we challenge you to investigate as well. So before we conclude, remember we mentioned that they normally pay the slave owners and never the slaves. So let us quickly reference Slavery and the Slave Trade in Africa by Henry M. Stanley and it was published 1893 and we see that in 1833 slavery was abolished throughout the british dominions and the government agreed to pay the slave owners of the west indies 20 million redemption money for 1 million of slaves on the 1st of august 1834 the famous act of emancipation came into operation throughout the west indies the eve of the great day was kept by watch meetings in acclamations of praise and thanksgiving but our interest is for you to see that the slave master has never paid the slaves anywhere so when then callaway is telling you that oh they are indigenous they are owed lots of money that's the slave master hiding behind him we challenge him to wait it's a lie the reason they are telling is so that some people will buy into it believing that the slave master was going to pay them. Then when they have succeeded in selling that appellation, remember we told you about generational conditioning. A child born from any time from now that listens to the lies being propagated by the Nkalowe will grow up believing that he's a, even a Negro child is now Indian. That's what they want to do. That's how they do it. So when they start it, you will think that it's a joke. Then you will go and debunk it like many people are doing, but the slave master will keep propagating it, knowing that you are debunking it as an individual, but he is pushing it as an establishment. It doesn't matter if he's using a Negro to do it. If you notice that they sold the Negroes and they were able to deceive the rest of the world that the Negroes sold themselves, that should tell you how sort of the slave master is. So let's look at one more little thing before we round up. And from the same book, it says, after the Asianto contract, under which for 30 years, England secured the monopoly of supplying the Spanish West Indies with slaves. As many as 192 ships were engaged every year in the transportation of slaves from the African coast. So our interest is the 192 ships that were involved in the trade. It is for those that were asking, where are the ships? As if they will keep the ships for you. And we ask them today, Assuming all shipments to what is west coast of oil and gas of any other products cease today and they destroy all the ships, 
20 years or 30 years from now, if a child asks you where are the ships with which they shipped all the oil that you are talking about to the Western society, please tell us how you will explain it to that child. That's our interest. If, assuming they stop shipment of oil or all types of resources today as we talk, 20 years from now and destroy all their ships and tankers or whatever they call it, 20 years from now, please tell us what you will tell a child that asks you where are the ships if you claim the ship to this volume of oil from your land to another place please explain it to us how you will explain to that child that's our interest otherwise all these comments of rubbish when you didn't research properly please desist from putting them here you are distracting us let us also reference history of the liverpool privateers and letter of mark with an account of the liverpool slave trade by goma williams with illustrations and it was published 1897. Now remember, the same way you see these so-called African-Americans today was the same way there were so-called Negroes in Europe. There were a lot. But you see how over time they have almost died off. That's because the slave master understands what he's doing. Our challenge to you as an individual, if you're a scholar, is to tell us the oldest recorded Negro on planet Earth you will see that the only one they have is people like Whitley, Phyllis Whitley and Equiano that wrote books, that's all. Because in their belief and in their plan, the Negro will be exterminated totally from the face of the earth. So they don't want to leave any memories of him anywhere. That's why you notice that wherever they are, they try to plant their foot soldiers, which is behind their Ruga philosophy in a place like Nigeria today. That's why Ambazonia and Biafra does not ever attract their attention. They pretend not to see what's going on there. Now, remember we told you, those, their foot soldiers, are people without the most basic of humanity of our common sense. The same way you see an army that was human, and then he is conditioned to now start seeing his fellow human as an enemy and start killing them that's how they condition the conquered negroes as well so we see what it tells us here that is of interest to those who are asking where are the ships but first we see that the lie of who was behind the raids was still there even during the slave trade and it says it was in effect argued by the defendants of the trade that the slaves procured in consequence of native wars would have been put to death had not the slave merchants humanely and providentially stepped in and relieved the native belligerent powers of the necessity of committing wholesale massacres. Now remember, this story is exactly like Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction. Just bear in mind that the slave master will find a lie against you if he wants to attack you. If you go to a place like uh, Nigeria today, go to Biafra, go to Ambazonia, the moment the so-called IPOB started agitating for their roads to be built, for schools to be built, and for better conditions of life. The army attacked and labeled them terrorists. So if you were to ask, why are you killing these people? They will tell you they are terrorists. Because you don't have the information, you will think they are telling you the truth. You will know they are just lying. This was the slave raiding terror group. They just renamed them in 1863, which will challenge you to investigate and challenge us too, if you think it's a lie, like this other viewer has done and we believe we would have clarified him that it doesn't make sense for him to think that the army could have been formed in 1863 instead of that they renamed the existing slave hunting terror group now if they had as much as 20,000 troops with which they conducted slave raids what happened to them by 1863 when we have records of slave hunts even after 1863 the only thing that happened in 1863 was that they lost the American market so they couldn't export Negroes to the US, but they could export to Turkey, they could export to the Middle East. So why would they now say the army was created in 1863 when the army was existing, with which they conducted their slave raids? We could have gone further with the army issue, but we don't think it's worth all the time to just do a, a video to show somebody who refuses to read that the army was the same slave hunting terror group, simply because they claim or tell him that they were formed in 1863 by one man a naval officer that took five houses from wherever 10 of 18. if you look at the figures even in some places they said 10 in other places they said 18. you don't even know which one is right but then the army that had it on their side removed it the moment they were asked questions around it because they know it's a lie so here we see 
that when slave ships arrived on the coast, the petty princes of the country sent out their Miami Dons in parties of from 300 to 3,000, often on horseback, to attack and burn down towns and villages in the dead of night so that the panic-stricken inhabitants were the more easily seized and bound while attempting to save themselves and those most dear to them from the flames. Now we challenge the man that claims that the Arab priests could have done it without horses and camels to tell us why this account is there. And remember, this is a massacre in Old Calabar. Now, if you want to see how sort of the slave master is again, if you see all the so-called DNA tests that are telling you that they are evil, you are this, you are that, they never tell you that you were from Biafra or all those existing kingdoms that were destroyed with the slave raids. Do you think they don't have these books? How many of you have they told that you are actually from the Bight of Biafra or Benin? Rarely, they won't tell you that because they understand what they are doing. Their interest is not to tell you that. Remember, they had shipped Negroes back to Sierra Leone. They had shipped to Liberia. So they no longer want to apply that method again. That's why they came with this idea of, oh, 2019, there was something going to happen. We are asking you, 2019 is almost gone. To Hebrew Israelites, how come your sky daddy hasn't come? It's incumbent on you to start using the brains the Almighty blessed you with. Nobody sold your forebears. They were captured. They were hunted, raided by the armies you see there today. So when you see the slave master shipping his weapons down there, it's for the same purpose. So you stop falsely accusing anybody of being behind your predicament. Also, to those that are following Den Calloway and his poorly scripted lies, you see where he tells us that the rapid decline of commerce consequent upon the revolt of the North American colonies and the activity of the American privateers seriously interfered with the Liverpool slave trade in 1773. The number of ships cleared to Africa was 105. This is for those that were asking where are the ships. Burden 11,056 tons, which carried to the West Indies 28,200 Negroes. In 1775, the number of ships fell to 81, burden 9,200 tons. While during the war, this branch of traffic in common with others had declined so much that in 1779, only 11 vessels burden 12,005 uh, 12, tons sailed from the Mercy to the coast of Africa. One great blow to the trade was an order in council prohibiting the exportation of gunpowder, an article which formed a large portion of every Guinea cargo. Now we challenge you, have you ever heard the slave master say he's not going to ship weapons to the armies in West Africa? Now if you have the most basic of common sense, could you please do us a favor? Explain to us how you believe or think that something like the Nigerian army is protecting you from the Cameroonian army, which is protecting you from the Ghanaian army, which is also protecting you from the Togolese army, which is also protecting you from the Benonese army. Just explain to us how a human being, if you are an adult, even if you are 10 years, can believe such a nonsense. Those are the things that are being used to enslave the people. The army is as useless as you can imagine and we challenge you to tell us one use of the army. It was a product of the slave trade. They just remodeled and rebranded them. That's why if you ask for freedom, if you doubt us, look at the Nigerian scenario. Omoyele Shoere of Sahara Reporters is working with the establishment. He claims he wants to do revolution now. Some of his groups in a charade, they arrested them. There was no army coming to shoot them. But those that talk about Biafra, they bring gun and shoot them and the justification from the slave hunters or well they whose forefathers were the slave hunters is that they want to break the country meanwhile a human being came from europe and told them that this country is created but you will hear the sultan tell you that it was god that created it you won't still see their lies well in any case we challenge this user that claims that the nigerian army was formed in 1863 instead of that they renamed the slave hunting terror groups in 1863 in an attempt to stop the slave raid we challenge him to tell us where the troops that were used for the slave hunts and slave raids disappeared to in 1863 when they lost their export of negro slaves to the american market and here we come to the end of this edition of negro divide reply part one 
we thank you very much for listening and we do encourage you to find time to conduct your own research do not believe what they wrote simply because they wrote it apply your common sense to it look at the historical records in details and try to connect the dots remember you can only connect the dots by looking backwards not looking forward we thank you very much once again for listening peace